Beowulf fit 29 in modern English. Until they had led to destruction and the fatal play of shields, their dear companions and their very lives. Then at the beer drinking an aged spearman speaks, who eyes an adorned sword, recollects it all the man's death by the spear. His heart is fierce, and he begins in gloomy wise to test a young campaigner's temper by the musings of his mind, to rouse a cursed strife, and says these words, Canst thou, my friend, discern the blade, the precious weapon which thy father bore to battle when he was under helmet for the last time, where the Danes slew him, the brave Schildings took possession of the field, when Witherhild lay low after the fall of heroes? Now a son of some one of these slayers goes about here in our hall, rejoicing in his trappings, boasts of the carnage, wears the adornment you should own by right. Thus he urges and prompts him time after time with bitter words, until the hour comes that on account of his father's deeds the woman's retainer sleeps blood-stained after the sword stroke, forfeit of his life. The other escapes from thence alive. He knows the country well. Then is the oath of the chieftains broken on both sides, when deadly hate weds up in Ingold, and his love for his wife grows cooler with the risings of care. Hence I count not the faith of the Herr the Bards, the great tribal peace, without deceit towards the Danes, nor their friendship stable. Now I will proceed and tell again of Grendel, that thou, O giver of treasure, mayst fully know what was the issue of the hand-to-hand -hand struggle of the champions. After the gem of the heavens had glided over the earth, the furious spirit, the dread ogre of night, came to close with us where we, still whole, kept watch over the hall. There was battle impending for Honshu, violent death for the doomed man. He, Belter champion, fell first. For him, my famous brother Thane Grendel was a devouring murderer. He consumed the beloved man's whole body. Howbeit the slayer with the blood yet on his mouth, intent on evil, would not after that leave the gold hall again, empty of hand. But first, lusty and strength he ventured on me, would have gripped me with ready hand. His glove hung, ample and strange, attached by curious clasps. It was all cunningly contrived with great skill, and with the skins of dragons. Therein he wished the fierce evildoer to put, as one of many, me unoffending. Thus he could not do, as soon as I stood upright in my wrath. 